Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part three for today. Tuesday, about to say Wednesday, Tuesday, October 16th, 2012. Um, I'm going to continue with this article and then we'll keep moving. As military suicides rise, the focus is on private weapons with nearly half of all suicides in the military having been committed with privately owned firearms. The Pentagon and the Congress are moving to establish policies intended to separate at-risk service members from the personal weapons. So this is definitely an issue that's happening, and they, they can't uh, ignore this, the Pentagon and the Department of Defense and that. Uh, they've actually created some kind of nasal spray that's going to, you know, another way to experiment on the troops, and uh, that's going to supposedly help with depression and suicidal tendencies. Also, they're going to, they have, they just started a, a new um, revamped suicide prevention program in which I just showed that right after they started this, there was a, um, an army sergeant who had no history of any problems, uh, just went and offed himself in a car. Yeah, shot himself in the head after uh, playing the role of a concerned friend in a suicide prevention class. So this is going to increase that. So instead of actually, like I said before, instead of actually stepping back and saying, well, why are these guys killing themselves? And, and, and thinking, well, maybe it's the mission. Maybe we should think about the mission. No, they want, this is because they want drones. They want cyborgs, and that's why they're pushing the military into more of a, um, a drone-based um, cyborg, machines, computers, AI, because with humans, you have blowback, and this is the blowback. So the Assistant Secretary of Defense for Health Affairs says this is not about authoritarian regulation. And they go on there and they said that this will actually be uh, voluntarily, voluntary, where does it say? Yeah, voluntarily, right? That's how it always starts until it becomes mandatory. Kind of interesting, though, it says here that uh, this suicide prevention campaign also includes measures to encourage service members, their friends and relatives, to remove possibly dangerous prescription drugs from the home of potentially suicidal troops. And the, and the crazy part is that a lot of people that are considered depressed, um, they'll put them on these pills and then they get suicidal. So, and then there, you know, and then there's ones that are already suicidal that are on pills and then they remove them or just other stuff. It could have nothing to do with emotions or personality or stuff like that behavior. It could be something completely different you know, uh, as far as these prescription drugs go, they get off them and all of a sudden they want to kill themselves. So it says here, recruiters hunted homeless with paintball guns. Arizona National Guard faces wide ranging investigation after members of the National Guard in Arizona hunted the homeless with paintball guns, forged documents, sexually abused women, embezzled funds, and were allowed to go more or less scot-free due to a lax and corrupt climate. Most of the perpetrators were military recruiters seeking teenage recruits or, uh, on visits to their high schools, said that a guard's top officer acknowledged the problem but blamed it on a few bad apples. Ooh, sound familiar, guys, like the police force, just a few bad apples. They say they have a, a good old boy network and a, ooh, like the police, fraternal order of police, a brotherhood, a fraternity atmosphere. It goes on and it says, the way the Arizona National Guard is today, I would not trust my son or daughter, said a lieutenant colonel. It disgusts me. People don't get fired, they get moved. Again, sounds like the police force, right? So this is my website, uh, ggnonline.com, Global Government News. Uh, there's a poll up here. I just closed uh, this morning, but the results are from will you vote this November, 65% say no, followed by 19% saying yes, and 15% saying maybe. You can put in your email address uh, right there. And on YouTube, my channels are djarko2012 and djarko2013. So, okay, moving on now to these drones and our... Drones will boost America's ravaged economy amid a dubious government claims that the jobless rate is falling. Some are actually suggesting that one way out of our dismal economy is to build more devices to keep an eye on us, namely drones. I actually had an, uh, a video titled, A Drone-Based Economy. <laughs> it was like, uh, what, three, four months ago. One recent headline actually reads, UAVs could boost the economy, uh, then went on to point out, that the U.S. is expected to capture 62% of the drone market in coming years, which would generate estimated $86 billion in an annual revenue. Said, so don't get us wrong, that's a lot of cheese, but it says here in an economy that totals about $15 trillion a year, that's a drop in the bucket. So the question is, is, is this what our privacy is worth now, $86 billion? 
DHS request for information, robotic aircraft for public safety from the Federal Business Opportunities website. The Science and Technology Directorate is the department primary research and development arm. They go on and it says that the mission is to protect the homeland by providing state, local officials with state-of-the-art technology and other resources. And they go on and they say in support of the mission, they'll conduct flight testing and evaluation of airborne sensors and small unmanned drones for transition uh, to its customers. And uh, BMD is Borders and Maritime Security Division. Now, the Robotic Aircraft or Public Safety Project will invite vendors, and it says here that they're going to evaluate the system uh, using realistic and relevant real-world operational s uh, scenarios such as law enforcement operations, of course, search and rescue, and all of our, what our heroes do. But safety concerns will be assessed, such as the aircraft's uh, capability for safe flight in the event of loss of communications between aircraft and ground controller. There, they don't have any. They're not going to... I mean, come on. They're going to fall out of the sky and they're going to fall in somebody's house or backyard. I mean, don't worry. Your privacy uh, is uh, is of great concern to them as well. Bay Area law enforcement agencies are testing drones. So it began as tools amid military combat. Now aerial drones are being considered by the Bay Area law enforcement agencies. This is the uh, These are the same guys, BART guys, that uh, sh uh, shoot unarmed uh, people in the transit, uh, in the transit little uh, area. Remember that? So this here agency is a cost-cutting way, again, a cost-cutting way to replace helicopters and use this technology to fight, actually, I don't even want to say to fight crime and save lives, right? Because we just know it's bullshit, right? Our heroes saving lives and fight crime? No, it's for the uh, uh, revenue collection, tax revenue collection. Another growing trend is what? The autonomous flying robot with a honeybee brain. They're going on and embarking on an ambitious project to produce the first accurate computer models of a honeybee brain in a bid to advance our understanding of artificial intelligence, or AI, and how animals think. They're going to uh, build models of the systems in the brain that governs the honeybee's vision and sense of smell. They aim to create the first flying robot able to sense and act autonomously as a bee rather than just carry out pre-programmed set of instructions. This is, of course, going to eventually lead to drones. That's what I'm talking about, the autonomous drones again, to phase out the human element. DARPA tests drones that refuel while airborne, so this is not a big surprise. I mean, <laughs> if it eventually, they're, they're going to be autonomous, they're going to have to refuel in air, right? Just like regular planes do. Uh, but then you can add what? Lasers. Boeing just put the finishing touches on an eight-wheeled laser truck. There, this is old. I mean, they've been working on this since the 80s and stuff like that, the U.S. and the Russians. Yeah, they say the weapon's a big break for U.S. military, which has been trying to develop laser weapons for years. Yeah, see, they, uh, the problem is getting it down to a usable size, right? Because eventually you're going to uh, strap it to a drone and uh, hit you while you're barbecuing in your backyard. That's that's the ultimate plan. See, that's that's what they call modern warfare. But yeah, it's called directed energy weapons, and they do have a, a uh, facility specifically for it in Florida, I believe, that just opened in the last year or two. And talking about uh, lasers... Dolphins bound for combat as Ukraine Navy announces plans to train them in underwater warfare with knives or guns strapped to them. How about some freaking lasers, right? To blow up enemy ships for military and, oh, search and rescue, find lost items. Yeah, here we go, too. Within this way, and also what? To, uh, to work with the disabled children. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, dolphins are good with people with, uh, I guess, autism. They're usually really good with them and stuff like that. People with disabilities, I'm not going to deny that. Uh, but, uh, you know, talking about underwater warfare, knives and guns strapped to them and then saying, oh, but they're going to help the children. So, yeah, it's just, to me, it's just real, again, real sleazy, real sleazy, obvious uh, tactics here. Okay, then the last five minutes, I'm going to move fast here, so try to stick with me. Um, high-tech CCTV cameras can recognize faces from half a mile away. These high-definition cameras can identify and track faces from half a mile away that could turn Britain into Big Brother society if left unregulated, right? So you need more government to prevent the government from stealing your privacy, right? And your rights. Hidden government scanners will instantly know everything about you from 164 feet away. This is, of course, in this is in the U.S. with Homeland Security. It says closed luggage, new laser-based molecule scanner fired 164 feet away. Trace drugs, gunpowder on your clothes uh, to what you had for breakfast to so the adrenaline level in your body. Agents will be able to get any information they want without even touching. Of course, this is what total recall, right? With Arnold Schwarzenegger. I then you have eye movements could be the next PC password. 
Computer scientists at Texas State are looking to create a system that can identify people by the way they flicker their eyes while looking at a computer screen. They say we can talk about this or refer to it as a biometric, so that's what it is. So, And computer scientists from all over the world are studying biometrics for crime solving or revenue collecting for border security, which that's basically they just want to make sure they manage uh, the drugs that come in and out, that they're authorized drugs to come in and out, make sure that... Um, that uh, that uh, illegal immigrants can come over the border, but just make sure that American citizens will be hassled, um, anally probed, um, scanned, and everything, and harassed uh, if they try to uh, leave and come back in, into the country. So, so yeah, they say it's just a high-tech way to sign into smartphones, tablets, and other devices. So eventually they'll have that. Email inbox is not private, says South Carolina court ruled a man's privacy was not violated when his wife's daughter-in-law managed to get into his email and find out the name of his lover because the messages remained in the inbox. The ruling was unanimous, and they decided that uh, the woman did not violate the 86 federal law about the email storage and ruled the lawsuit from a husband could not go forward. And that should pretty much be a given, right? So that it's being monitored, all your text messages, your emails. We know that is in the U.K. and the U.S. U.S. ambassador internet fee proposal gaining momentum. So the U.N. ambassador warned on Friday that a proposal to give a U.N. Uh, agency more control over the internet is gaining momentum in other countries. It's called the UN's International Telecom Union ITU authority over the internet. Could come up in December for uh, ruling. It will create new rules that will allow them to uh, charge more for carrying international traffic. So it says here that it could force websites, you know, like Google, Facebook, and all of them to pay fees to network operators. Well, they're not going to pay it. They're just going to they're just going to turn it on to you or uh, put more advertising in it. ID scans raise privacy fears. People who have their license and their fingerprints scanned when entering nightclubs and pubs could be increasing their risk of identity theft or fraud, says the Australian Privacy Commissioner. Oh, a commissioner on privacy. Hmm. They said they received an increasing number of complaints from people uncomfortable with handing over their personal information to get into a venue uh, at night. Talking about clubs and bars use machines to scan patrons upon entry to help detect fake IDs and retain a record of banned patrons and for market research, which is to get all your personal information and sell it. And will you see any of those profits? <laughs> no, you won't. <laughs> you know, you know, if you try to share a file, a movie with somebody or show online, um, you know, you, you can get SWAT team now. They have six strikes, you're out, that they're going to start enforcing for sharing a, a file that someone paid for originally. And it's not like you're going to be making any money off of it. You're going to view it and you're going to you're going to probably delete it, right? So, next up we have uh, California governor's veto lets state agencies disrupt protesters' cell phone communications. I covered this before. Ooh, look at that. Before the Bay Area Transit, BART officials disrupted a protest rally over police brutality by shutting down wireless service in the subway. Uh, California passed the bill requiring a court order before such action. So see, they can still do it. They just need permission from their little Freemasonic authorized judge. Then you have FBI exempts massive database from Privacy Act protections. The FBI has exempted the FBI data warehouse system, so they uh, they they basically exempted themselves from important Privacy Act safeguards. Database, database sorry, ingests troves of personal information, including race, birthday, biometric information, social security numbers, financial, basically everything. Uh, it also contains information on a broad category of individuals, including subjects, suspects, victims, witnesses, complaints, informs, informants, sources, bystanders, <laughs> law enforcement personnel, intelligence, other responders, and it goes on here and it says that the FBI has exempted these records from notification access and amendment provisions of the Privacy Act. And earlier this year, there was another massive government database that the Department of Homeland Security exempted from uh, as far as the Privacy Act provisions go. The smartphone of the future will be in your brain, kind of like your credit card will be in the smartphone, it will be in your brain, you get the chip. It's like using your eyes for your password or using a mouse or stuff like that. The ultimate goal in your cell phone is to what? Is to make it smaller and then embed it in yourself. So all the side effects of using a cell phone, including, you know, cell phone elbow or carpal tunnel while using a computer, that's all temporary, you know, eugenics kind of blowback of side effects that eventually, um, you know, 
people are going to be full on in the system or in the matrix. And this is just one step further down that road. DARPA combines human brains and a megapixel camera to create the ultimate military threat detection system. Combining EEG brain waves, soldiers, cameras, and everything. And Google puts its virtual brain technology to work, talking about AI, creating neural networks that can learn without human assistance. Social media surveillance helps government read your mind. Anti-police rants on Facebook lead to prosecution. This is GGN, and I'm Darko. Thank you.